Hello guys, it's not the case. And this time, I want to give my thoughts, of course, since I'm a Nintendo fan, the Nintendo Direct that was shown on September the 4th. So, yeah, I mean, no surprise, every September, I get us now the new standard, is that they're going to have a Nintendo Direct that announced games from the end of 2019, let's just say this current one, all the way to early 2020, or usually the end of the year to a bit of next year. So, no surprise with this one. So, I'm gonna give my thoughts on the stuff that I'm interested in, that what I saw on the direct. So, I'm not gonna really give my thoughts of everything I liked last time, because some, some of them, really, when I saw it, I'm like, eh, well, I don't, I don't really care about it, such as, well, Overwatch finally going to the Switch. And of course, there was a accessory case that got leaked on Amazon and then they removed it as soon as possible and then people say ah, okay maybe they really won't have an overwatch maybe there is and of course there is it's gonna come out of course October the 15th 2019 a lot of the leaks the room that talked about from other people well it's confirmed so if you only have a switch you don't have a strong computer and you really want to play overwatch and there you go so something like that do I really care about Overwatch? Not really. But I can understand why people like it. So with that, I want to give my thoughts. First of all, the some of the mini headline that they didn't really talk about, they just introduced the game. Because in every direct also, there are going to be some game they're gonna really focus on. And they gotta give more detail about the game. And for this one, I think it was four of them. It was Pokemon, Sword and Shield, Animal Crossing. And Luigi's Mansion, and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening uh, remake, of course, that one. So, but with that said, here I'm just going to go down the list. I'm going to use the website from Nintendo, so that's going to be my, kind of like my framework there. So the link's going to be on the description box. That, okay, Luigi's Mansion, they talked about more about it. There's going to be now new floors they're going to introduce. And one of them, of course, have a pyramid inside a hotel. I mean, the premise is that you go to this weird horror haunted hotel, and then I guess it goes to the pocket dimension or something, because one of the rooms, apparently, you're in, you're in a desert with a pyramid. So, I mean, come on, it's a fantasy world. It's Luigi, so well, whatever. But the thing is, they show new features, such as you can play four-player co-op with one system, and then a new mode that up to eight players for Luigi's or for Luigi, some sort of battle royale. Who can suck in the most ghosts? So there you go, more feature for the game itself. I think it's interesting because they already showed the single player. It showed Luigi and the new feature Luigi that was introduced on the Luigi's Mansion on the Showed new floors. There's online multiplayer, not only local but online also. There you go. So, really interesting that one. I see why a lot of people are excited for this. It's of course going to come out October the 31st. So, awesome for that game. I might get in the long one. I still have to finish Luigi Mansion 2 as well. Trying to refinish Luigi Mansion for the 3DS. I, I gotta finish it on the GameCube a long time ago. So, too many games always. So, that's freaking awesome there. And of course, once again, really not surprised. Another free to start Kirby game, and it's the same one that was on the 3DS. I mean, if you want more, if you want to play it more, you gotta put in money, get jewels, and kind of like the stamina. So it's kind of the same thing. The premise: you choose one different class for Kirby: fighters, cutter, beam, umbrella, and then it's four player, probably also four player online. So again, it's really good. Free game, you can't really deny about that one. So, we love Kirby, you love this game. I do love Kirby, so I'm gonna try it out and have a chance. So, pretty awesome there. But the next one I am anticipating for this game, and that is the Trials of Mana Remake or Sigur Mana 2. So, I did kind of talk about this a long time ago in my other video. If I remember, I'm gonna put it in the link in the description box about the history of Trial of Mana and what happened. But, of course, they showed more features, new features, so of course, it's 3D, English dub, and also now on YouTube, there's my Square Enix YouTube channel, they have the 
TGS trailer there now too. Again, English dub. Love it. And I'll talk about it more why I kind of said that English dub. So, one of the new features they showed that apparently wasn't on the Famicom version or the classic version is you can actually change past a light version of what you are or a dark version. Because remember, the difference between this Secret of Mana or Trials of Mana versus Secret of Mana is Secret of Mana was more weapon based. Like the multiple weapon, the more you use it, the more it levels up. It, I mean, Secret of Mana plays like the Secret of Mana for the SNES, a little bit of minor changes, but Trial of Mana, because they said they worked it from the ground up, like everything is way different kind of rules. So one of them is class changes, you can have a light version of yourself or a dark version. Say if you're Durand, the main character, a sword fighter, you can turn into a paladin or a dark knight. Freaking awesome. I can't wait to get this game. At the same time, believe it or not, I reserve my pre-order for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I, I know, it's so weird after I saw that Easter 2019. But, and also, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. The good thing is, for me personally, it's going to be for a while. So people thought it was going to be like for part 2020 because Secret of Mana was the warrior of I think 2018 when it first released. For this one, they announced the date and it's going to be April the 24th, 2020. So for me personally, that's good because too many, I, have, I have too many games. I start playing Dragon Quest. The last event for the PlayStation 4, I know, not the Switch version. Which is not even out yet, but you get my idea there. I'm playing a game, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Trails of Cold Steel 2, that's me too, and Super Neptune RPG, so you can understand where I'm coming from. The downside for me personally is, it's one month after Final Fantasy VII Remake, so, I mean, two each of their own, but for me, like, too many good games for 2020, oh my goodness, already. So, wow, Secret of Mana, or Trials of Mana, they, a lot of improvement, so I am starting playing the SNES version, I actually got it. Credit to Amazon for their sort of semi discount, but whatever. I'm not, I didn't pay $40, I paid for $25, so ah, you get the idea there. So then the next one I'm interested in, I want to talk about is Discovery of a Small Town. Well, the title's called Town, developed by Game Freaks, of course, the people Pokemon, but they also other things like, well, what's it? Wrecking Alt, I forgot I forget the name, but that one. The one I really known is Tembo the Badass Elephant. That was developed by uh, Game Freaks. So this is another game they're doing. And it's a story about you're trying to protect the town. It's like half RPG, half town simulation. So there you go. Interesting about the game. Not much about it, but it's gonna come October this year. It'll Thing, October 19. Looks promising. I might look it up to it. And the interesting part here is that if you're a fan of Undertale, the guy, the creator of Undertale, he's com uh, contributing by putting, he's doing some of the music in the game. So that's interesting there. So, again, Town, we'll see what it is. October is going to come out. Interesting, in my opinion. And then, of course, they showed more The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker remake. So they showed about the dungeon, of course, if you saw like, the trailer, I think, either on Twitter or on YouTube, if you put in the Link's Awakening Amiibo on the Dungeon Creator mode, Shadow Links comes in, and if you beat that, you get a lot of parts. So they kind of show more about how does it work, how you grade it, how you can share it. And the best part now also is that, of course, it's a no-duh, if you have other, other Legend of Zelda Amiibo, you can use it, and you can probably get contests about it, kind of like Breath of the Wild when you use a Zelda Amiibo or a Link Amiibo, you know, you get free items or materials, so it's the same thing there, but, you know, material to create your custom-made dungeon. Best part is also, you can actually share it with your friends or online. There you go. Again, pretty interesting there, so I can't wait for that one. And of course, if you heard, apparently there have been news of the Link Amiibo, the multiple variation, 30th anniversary, the Legend of Zelda Amiibo are getting restocked. The one that's a concrete that people heard about it is, if I'm correct, I'm wrong. I know the Majora's Mask Link 
Not the Super Smash Brother, but the actual real one. They bring you back at Best Buy. Uh, GameStop, from what I heard, is the what is that? The Ocarina of Time. So the only one I really need in one is Twilight Princess because it was a GameStop exclusive. I came in a day late and said, "Oh, you can pre-order it." And why not? Because they didn't get enough stock. Bullshit. Hopefully, hopefully, if I'm able to get the Meta Knight. Luckily at Target. Hopefully, I can get a uh, lucky with this one. Maybe it's gonna. Hopefully, it's an Amazon exclusive. I really don't want to be a Target exclusive because I can tell you getting Meta Knight was pain in the ass. But whatever, we'll just have to wait and see. Then. So the next one I want to give my thoughts is more information on Dragon Quest 11 S stands for Switch, the Trinity version. They show more about the 2D, for the 2D mode, and of course they explain that you get to go through past world. So that is interesting there, and I kind of talked about this before already on April Nintendo Direct. That a lot of people want this feature on the PlayStation 4 or Steam, and somebody did ask for Enix, and that's right now they said we were undecided, and the reason really is that you have to understand that Dragon Quest 11 for the Switch. It's published by Nintendo. The story from what I heard is Nintendo want the game to be on Switch. Square said, sure, if you want it, you gotta pay for it, you gotta fund it, we're not doing it. Square Enix, they're kinda a bit of a nasty. So and the rumor has it is that they gave them more money for the Nintendo exclusive feature. So will it be on the other system? Who knows? No one knows. Hopefully, but we'll just have to wait and see once the game comes out. And I'm gonna cut it here because it was getting too long, like always, and rambled too much, I don't know why. So next time, more of my thoughts of the Nintendo Direct, so stay tuned for that.